Hello, and welcome to another edition of Stump the Chumps. This is your pal Al here. I have uh, distinguished guests here from the town of, uh, town or village? Village. We're going to get them to a fight already? Town. Village. Town, village. See, we're going to start oh, already here. I believe in the village. That's why I'm sitting in the middle of these two guys. <laughs> here we have Ted Baker from, from Essex and Ray Reynolds. Um, as you can see, we're missing uh, our good friend Herb. Uh, his father passed away earlier in the week and uh, can't be with us. But in the immortal words of Herb, the show must go on. So, uh, the number to call here, 862-3966. We're going to be asking the questions about the, the town, village, and all the general vicinities of Essex here. And uh, you'll be calling up. We're we'll going to be showing you a film here that screwed up at the beginning because of technical difficulties. We had a hurricane in Essex the other day. Remember that one, Ray? The other day? Anyways. The local VFW here at Essex Junction. One, Mr. Kevin Maloney. Kevin, <laughs> thanks for joining us. My name is Leo Knox, and the question I have is what year did IBM move to Essex Junction, how many people worked on the assembly line, and what are their names? Hi, I'm Steve Bordo from the Essex VFW. First question, was uh, the train going from Essex Junction to Cambridge, what, what year did the train go off the tracks and Underhill. Second question, who was the last post commander of Fort Ethan Allen, Camp Johnson, or uh, Fort Ethan Allen? I'm Michael Jans, and I have uh, three questions at all for our people. The number one question is, what is the oldest house today existing in Essex Junction? The second question is uh, relating to sports and when was the Essex uh, Junction uh, varsity football team uh, formed? And the third question is, who was their coach? Okay, my name is Susan Vaughn, and I'm a member of the Ladies Auxiliary here at Essex Junction. And I'd like to know, in reference to a question that was earlier asked about Murray's Tavern, before it was used as a tavern or a restaurant, I'd like to know what the original use of the building was. Question number two is, when did the grandstand at the fairgrounds burn? And question number three is in reference to a question that was earlier asked about five corners. I'd like to know when it changed from four to five corners, and I'd like to know what the fifth road was. Hi, my name is Steve Butan. I'm from the Essex Junction VFW, post 6689, and I have a few questions. What was the last street in Essex Junction to be paved? Question number two. The last show that they had at the grandstands in Essex Junction before it burned down. There was a show there that day. And the year that Robinson's uh, gas station left the five corners where the Chittenden Bank is now. Another question. Where did Teach Outs get their start? What part of Essex Junction? And the name of the hardware store that was located right across from Teach Out, same year. And what was the, the last year that the girly shows were at the Essex Junction Fairgrounds and the name of the black headliner that was there for so many years? There. Now, how do you like them bananas, folks? That's the beginning of this month's edition of Stump the Chumps. Now it's up to you, as I want to thank our participants in these opening questions. It's up to you to call us here at 862-3966 
with answers to those questions or more questions of your own to challenge us and to question us with some more on this month's edition of Stump the Chump from Essex Junction. The phones are ringing already. Uh, as you can see, uh, the participation was, was excellent up there at Essex Junction. Um, Ray, you've got any... Uh, Let me add them, line one. Let me add them, line one. Well, hold on one second. Hello, you're on the air. Alan, Bill Norfolk, how you doing? How you doing, Bill? I've got a question for the gentleman here. I don't believe Lincoln ever stated Lincoln in. <laughs> and if he did, I want conclusive evidence that he did. That's the rumor that he uh, was called the Lincoln Inn because Lincoln had stayed there one time or something. You didn't hear that from me, I bet. No, I mean, that's what that's what rumor is around town Winooski anyway. Now see, now you got Winooski dragged into your, your yeah. affairs. And, and if not, why do they call it Lincoln Inn? Why do they call it the Lincoln Inn? Well, they want to get it after a famous man. I know a Bill Mayer built it. Okay. <laughs> Easy as that? Huh? It's, uh, it's going to be more complicated than that. That I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, was there, we had something in the, in the uh, discussion the other day about the, the Lincoln Inn, the front of the Lincoln Inn. What was the construction? Uh, well, it was a big lawn where the uh, gas station is now. And uh, it really looked beautiful. It's too bad. Curly Demers. Curly Demers is the one that <coughs> bought the Lincoln Inn and changed it and put the gas station in there. Yep. That was originally, it was a Shell gas station. And that was done by uh, Pearly Demers, and then Pearly still owns, or his wife, I guess, his widow, still owns the Agway gas station today. Wasn't there rumor, I heard rumor, that they used to ice skate out in front of the Lincoln Inn, or is that when it was yes, something else? That's correct, yeah, they did. Okay, then. Well, thank you, Bill. So we never slept there, all right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye. Yes, you're on the air. Hi. Hi. You know who this is? <laughs> Not right off the bat, no. This is Jeff, first year. Okay. And I have an answer. Okay. And the answer to when the last uh, show at the Champlain Valley Fair when it burned down? Yes. It was a rodeo. Very good. What year was that? Mm, it was the early 60s. Yeah, that seems to be a complicated question on exactly what year that was. That's a, that's a bottle of banal for the answer to that one there. I think it was 64. It was, it, if anybody's got the exact date on that particular thing, we did we do know now there was a rodeo. He punched me because I knew and he didn't, but that's that's beside the point. Um, find out what the year uh, that the the fire was, and I got to agree with, with Ted that it was around 64, 65, somewhere in that vicinity, but somebody's got to know the exact date. Okay. Thank you. Yep, bye. Okay, I got a couple of questions I'm going to fire out here. That, uh, again, totally oblivious of what uh, took place in Essex, except for, well, I can't say that on the air either. My mother's watching. Happy 70th birthday today, too, Ma. I'm not allowed to say that. You want to say hi to anybody at the Quality Bake Shop? No, We're not no, allowed no. to say Quality Bake Shop, so don't say it on the air. No, oh, I can say the Quality Bake Shop? From the VFW in Essex. Oh, thanks. Oh, a new thing added to our uh, to our prize package. Outside of the hats that have been going so well and the banal that's been going so well, we've got a five-year beach pass for the Essex Municipal Beach. What do you think of that? You think that'll be a big hit? We got plenty of them too. Okay. Um, questions. Who was the first general manager of IBM? It's one of the ones I've got. And what eatery was located in the parking lot next to Whipple's? And name the officer who captured a man on the 10 most wanted list. I believe it was in the 50s. And uh, I want to know that person's name and who the crook was. And also who owned the Essex Publishing Company? And one of my sentimental favorites was the business in downtown Essex that gave away combs, ashtrays, and actually, we're not going to show them to you right off. Pens, pencils. What else did they give away, Ray? Combs. Combs. Yeah. I got one of them too. Okay. Number to call: eight six two three nine six six. Ted, you got any questions for these people out there? Uh, 
who, brought, who bur built the Brownell block and what year? Okay, who built the Brownell block and what year? Ten? Oh, yeah, did I come I mean, uh, Ray, rather. <laughs> well, that's, uh... I'm sorry, Bob, go ahead. <laughs> that's 1894. Right. And who built it? Sam Brownell. Yeah. Okay. Um, you got any questions for him out there? You've got a, a small list out there. Well, i got a couple of them here. Uh, there's a pizza hut on um, Susie Wilson Road. <laughs> That's another story <laughs> altogether. Uh, and uh, what was that formerly before the pizza hut? Okay. Go ahead. One more? Sure. we got a couple more. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Um, Duke, Duke Euler is going to station up on 15 there, and that, uh, what was that formerly? Okay. Okay. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, I have an answer to one of your questions. Okay. About the Pizza Hut? Yes. On Susie Wilson Road? Mm hmm. That used to be Joey Purvis's waterbed, which used to be Reed's Slaughterhouse. Before that, please. Oh, that's going to be oh, he's back. playing dirty with you now. <laughs> uh, last I remember is the reeds with the slaughterhouse. Before that. History. Oh, no, that's not quite that old. <laughs> sounds sounds kind of young for that one. Um, you got another question for us? Mm, no, not, a, not right now. I got another question for you, though. No, I won't ask it. We promise we won't do that. The Susie Wilson Road thing is starting to get to us. Never mind. Okay, <laughs> Thanks for calling. Bye. Bye. Okay. Okay. Yes, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing tonight? Good. I got a question for you. I don't have the answer. I hope someone can tell me. Good. I'll, we'll, one of us will lie to you then. And, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> can you tell me when the last train uh, left the uh, circus off at the... Essex Five Corners and uh, paraded up to the fairgrounds. What year was that? The fair used to come in by train. World of Mirth. Um, that's going to be about 19, about 1950 to 52. That sound about right? 1950 to 52. I didn't know, but that sounds good. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks for calling. So that was World of Mirth. Hello. Hey. Yes. Uh, that service station that was mentioned on 15 used to be a Sunoco. Yeah, but before Duke that. Before Duke, that. Duke Euler's way back. <laughs> He's got his way back machine out uh, now. Let's go back into the 40s. Back in the 40s. Maybe the 30s. Now, I wasn't even thought of being you born got a, You got a hint for him? It's fair to throw a hint even if it's mm, the wrong one. Hop a <laughs> That's the one I was thinking about. Yeah. Chicken Ranch. I had no idea. But I, I can barely, barely remember being a, 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 a chicken farm. Who owned it? Who owned the, uh, who owned those chickens? Right, Bigelow. Was it? Was there a name of the Chicken. Bigelow's chickens? Oh, or, yeah, uh, Bigelow's, right, Bigelow's chicken farm. Bigelow's chicken, <laughs> yeah. chicken farm. Okay. Yeah, that was the chicken farm. He and I played baseball against each other. God, you played baseball against everybody. We as a kid, sports ones as there. a kid, we used to go up there and um, kill chickens. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and you, got a, you got something to stump us with? Uh, yeah, when was the last reported catamount in the Essex area? Jesus, I Jesus. <laughs> we all had the same answer to that one. About 1900. No, it was before 1900. Well, before my time. I think we now get all D. Boone. Well, you got us on that one. You got an answer, or were you just pulling that one out of your hat? I was <laughs> just pulling that one out of my hat. <laughs> yeah, sure, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> okay, thanks for calling. Bye. Bye. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, hi. Who was Susie Wilson? <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> Everybody knows of me, I guess. Well, uh, that was a lady that lived on the corner where you turn on the Susie Stop Wilson. Poking. And uh, she was married to Fritz Kripser. And she was a housewife that lived on the corner of Susie Wilson Road in 15. Yeah, that's innocent enough. That's yeah, how long ago? Well, that's back in the 30s. Yeah. And before the corner was taken out, there was a house right there, and the porch was perhaps uh, four feet from the uh, from the highway, Route 15. And uh, Fritz and, uh, and Mrs. Scripture used to set out on the porch as I went by when I was a kid. And uh, 
then they tore the house down to make the road better uh, to turn on to Susie Wilson Road. Thanks very much. Thank you for well, calling. So why did they name it after her? <laughs> An old resident of Essex. <laughs> he's well, he's that's where she lived. over there. She yeah. lived there. She lived there on that corner, and they just, she, I guess she was brought up around there, but she lived on that corner. She married Fritz Kripser. <laughs> And Teddy and I have a little difference on the on the uh, nationality, but Fritz Kripser was a I have him as a German. I have him as a Swiss. Swiss, but uh, to my knowledge, he was a German. He, I, mem I remember Fritz Kripser. He was a white-haired, and as far as I was concerned, he was an old German person and a very nice old man. And it was hard to call it Fritz Kripser Road because it'd be hard for you to say. Yeah. Susie Wilson was a lot so, easier, right? Susie so was easier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Let's get off that one. Yes, you're on the air. Hi, how you doing tonight? Good. Um, I got a question for the three of you. Um, I know all three of you. Do you know who I am? No, keep going. He's got a so far. I'm a relative of someone you know. Listen. And we're not related, so some of us isn't going to be involved. I don't know. I'm the cousin of Susie Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Flip Wilson? Yep. <laughs> I know it. DC was related. Can I come pick up my prize? Sure. Can I? Sure. Terrific. Okay, thanks for calling. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. We get off that subject fast here. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ray, why don't you... Go, Ray's brought some things in here that you might want to explain here. And, uh, well, we got other questions on these. Well, okay. Then fire out your questions okay. on those things. This, uh, <clears throat> this was bottled in Essex Junction at one time, and uh, I'd like to probably ask where the location was. It's Canada Dry. Non-skid bottle. So the drugs could hold on to it better there. The good grips on it. It was... Uh, produced and it was bottled in Essex Junction. Okay, so we want to know the location of, of the bottling uh, uh, plant in, in Essex. That's right. Okay, and this is my favorite here, the other. You like this one, though? Yeah. Have uh, you got another one on that one? No. They, okay. okay, let's go this one. Are you ready for this one? This, uh, what I'd like to know is probably um, where this originally was produced. This, uh, where the location of this milk producing plant was. And it was in Essex Junction and a spot that uh, a lot of people probably will remember. Yeah, that has the original cap on it too. I think that's... Uh, sure does. Ethan Allen. People with no fingernails would go thirsty awful fast when they did. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> sure would. Okay. Shall we go further with this? Uh, well, let me get these out of the way before I throw these out of the way. we got another caller here. Hold on. The Ethan Allen Creamery was on uh, Park Street in Essex, right now where the Essex beverage is. Let's go back further than that. Oh, man, he's way back. back there. That's as far back as I can remember. I'm right, going to go back further than that. What is right next to the uh, Fassett's Bakery first store? What is that building? Fassett's Bakery? Official? Oh, that? We'll have another question for you in a minute on that one. <laughs> I could ask what a question be there? on that. It's the old high school. Oh, well, right. yeah, I'm behind. That's Park Street School now. That was the old high school, right? Yeah. But okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Yes, you're on the air. Hi. Uh, my husband says that the Canada Dry bottling plant was on Jackson Street. You agree with that? Yeah. Right. Okay. Vermont, Vermont Maple Orchards was. That's correct. Thank you. Do you wait a minute. They're, they're trying to give away hats here. They. I don't think she wants them hanging around here anymore. Yes, if you'd stop interrupting me over there. Have <laughs> you got a question to stump us with? Or has your husband got one? Yeah, how long was Vermont Maple Orchard there before they closed it up? Oh, jeez. That was there. I can't give an exact likely, time. likely over 20 years. It's been a long time, but I can't, I can't answer it exactly. Is a long time going to cut it? Not with me. No, probably not. Well, I think they stumped us. You got the answer? Uh, about 50 years. Okay. Boy. That's a bottle of banal. That'll be our first one here. Yeah. You use this stuff, it's good for everything. You can polish your car with it. Okay. Huh? I'd rather have you a got hat. It. <laughs> oh, here's a hat to wipe the car down with. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for calling. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Um, Ted, fire him out some more questions out there. 
<coughs> Give me a couple more. The uh, Lincoln Hall. Okay. Uh, who built it? In what year? Who built the Lincoln Hall? Yep. Poor Ray Reynolds, huh? Uh -oh. oh, yes. Long Hold on. Here we go. Here you go, Ray. Now, go ahead. You're on. Yes. Yes. For Ray Reynolds. Yes. Thanks. Who was the man that was injured in the train wreck in Underhill in 1910? Oh. <laughs> I can't answer it. I don't know. You're I wasn't 15, here. You right? <laughs> I wasn't here at that time, so I, the train wreck in 1915. Oh, you got me stumped. I don't know. Oh, it was 1910. 1910? Yeah. Jeez, you know who it was? Yeah. <laughs> Probably his grandfather. You know who you're talking to here? No. Well, that's always handy, too. Huh? That's extortion VSW. Ah. <laughs> you guys been there long? Uh, since January. <laughs> good answer. Yeah, that's a, that's good for a hat. That that's a good answer. Is. Okay. Uh, who is this person? Dave Bordo. Uh, oh, you're not the one that got uh, killed in the 1910 accident, are you? No, it's 1911. 1911. Yeah. Who was this person we're supposed to know, or Ray's supposed to know, actually? You should know it. I'll write you a letter. <laughs> <laughs> right, Speaking of the know. train accident, did we ask about the... Uh, the I no, I probably do know, and I can't... Yes, we, I asked you the, that question that night you were here at the post. Uh, uh, and the train... The railroad going from Essex Junction to Cambridge. B&L. B&L. Negative. Uh-oh. We got another... St. Johnsbury, long coming. Negative. <laughs> <laughs> well, God, I always knew that. Oh, let's from, see. Yeah. From Essex to Cambridge, that was... I always knew it was the B&L. And that's the one that went off the track? Yeah, uh, wait a minute. But Lamoille. That's B&L? Yes. Yes. Dalton, Lamoille County? Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Uh, what was that train question we had what, when the train went off the tracks in Underhill that was asked in the, in, the, in the thing there? How many years did it take to get that train, the rest of the train, out of that? We had a discussion about that, too. How, long, how many years it took them to haul that crap out of there? It happened in 1920, again, way before my time. My knowledge is still an engine in there. Uh, between Wayne King's residence and uh, and uh, Underhill, there's, a, there's still an engine in there, in that, uh, that swamp in there. With the Didn't it take them four years to get the rest of the stuff out, eventually? And Some others, I think that was mentioned four or five years. I can't really say, uh, yeah. something like that. Okay. Yes, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yes, W again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the train wreck. What was the question on that? How many years it took him to get the wreckage out of that? Still there. Uh, that's what Ray was yeah. saying, that the possibility of the engine is still in there. It and is. It, and it, uh... Rumor has it it took them at least four years to get the rest of the You know the approximate location on that? Uh, it's right across from Harry Destron's uh, fish hatchery on Route 50. It is, huh? <laughs> All right. Right by Charlie Garby. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, what things come up? <laughs> oh, I, okay. I knew it was in there. Okay. Oh, you're agreeing with him? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't know when he's agreeing with yeah, him or not. Well, that's well okay. there's an engine in there. I told you that the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it happened in 1910. You think it'll be worth some uh, scrap? Is it underwater or something like that? Is it? I would say it's down in the mud in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> underwater. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for calling. Yeah, you're See welcome. you later. Bye. Bye. We have somebody on line one yet? Still? I'll try it. I'll try it again. Hello. Yeah. Yes. There, there used to be another spur line that came in from Burlington uh, to Essex. What route did it used to take? Ben. What route did they take? Where did the, where did the spur run through? From Burlington to Essex, you're talking? Yep. Went through the Wickham Farm, I believe. Well, isn't that there today? It, you can still see the bed down there. Just north of the airport. Just no. north of the airport, there's an old bed that runs through there that used to come in Essex. Along the river? Yep. 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 Oh, my River Cove Road, maybe. 
Yeah. You said right. right? Right. North of the old Lime Pill, uh, White Street. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, Ted, why don't you hit him with another question there? This could be another. This could be another hat question here. <coughs> Murray's bar on uh, near the depot. What was that before it was a bar? Clear back. We lost it. We scared him off a lot. Oh, hold on. Yes. Yes. Uh, Al. Yes. Hey, uh, Mr. One of the questions there was, who was the last uh, officer in, in charge of the 40th and Allen? Yes. I believe that was a Major Lloyd, and he retired as a bird colonel. Check that out. See what I'm right. I believe. Well, what have I got for an answer? What have you guys got for the answer? We both went, we all went through that. Uh, hold on, I got to look at my cheat sheet. Uh, I don't know. Nope, that's not who I got. I've got uh, a Colonel Monaghan. Does that sound right? No, I think it's Major Lloyd. He retired a bird colonel. Nope. I mean, I guess the question that was asked uh, on that thing was who was the last uh, post commander at 40th and Allen. I don't know. Uh, I've got a Colonel Monaghan. If anybody's got the, what they think is the answer, I could lie. Is this Donnie? Yes. Hi, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> One of our other guests here. Uh, okay. Thanks, Don. Okay, Al. Bye. All right. Yes, you're on the air. Hi. Uh, on Murray's Tavern? Mm -hmm. It was formerly a livery stable. Murray's Tavern Livery uh, Stable. Uh, who was the fellow that ran it? That's the spirit. Give it back to her. <laughs> who, who ran that livery stable? Do you know? No, I don't, but I do know that there are painted murals still on the wall that are underneath the present uh, covering. Hmm. And they say the oaks still even come through the ceiling at times. Huh. A uh, Moe's Fisher ran it. Mo Clear back. Clear back. Yep. Is that farther than way back? Yes. <laughs> Clear back. <laughs> You had a story about the, the, the horses and that. Was that the livery stable with the fire department? Uh, no, 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 no. We well, might as well tell that story too about the, the, the fire stations around in that <coughs> vicinity. The, one of the early fire stations. Where was one of the early fire stations? I mean early, in Essex Junction. You're talking horse drawn or, or? Horses. Okay. This would be back in the before 1920. And what's there today? Oh, yeah. yeah a dress shop. Uh, we asked him a question, Teddy. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy's, Teddy's got to fire both ends of the, of the thing here. Boat barrel. <laughs> I need to know what the last street was. And don't answer this. But what the last paved street was in Essex. What was the last street to be paved? Line one. Yes, you're on the air. Yeah, um, the fire station used to be right across from where Henry's Market is, wasn't it? That's correct. Uh, there used to be a place that served food there. Could you tell me uh, what the name of that was and when they went out of business? Muncie's Restaurant. No, that's down the street from that building. Go oh, down the street, right? Yeah, that's not the. It's not that where the fire station was. That's down the street where uh, the restaurant was. And we'll probably ask you that question in a few minutes. What was the name of that food place? Uh, the name was Muncie's Diner. That's correct. Uh, what year did they go to business? Well, they went out. That's how you got me for a minute. Let me think just for a minute here. That would be 19... That would be about 1981 uh, to 82. I think you correct on that one. I beg your pardon? I think you're correct on that one. Yeah, I own the building. Oh, I do. Okay, well, I'm your son-in-law, and I want my hat. <laughs> You're a turkey. <laughs> See you later. Nothing, nothing's fair, yeah. thanks. Nothing's fair. I'm going to get my hat anyways. Here. So, so when did they stop using horses for the fire engines? Jeez, that's a good question. Uh, well, boy. good question. That'd have to be in the... Um, Somewhere along the 30s, uh, early 30s, I'm well, going to guess. I think before that, before that. You think so? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, sure. boy. I but who know. had the story of, of how they operated that? I mean, I, I have well, a history of it, too. But the, the story was that the horses were kept back at Lincoln Hall in a barn by Ernie Martin. Yeah. And when the fire whistle would blow on top of the Lincoln Hall, they'd run the horses over, 
back of in, dropped the harness, sits in the gold, and never lost a cellar hole. <laughs> a good tradition. A proud tradition. Okay. Number to call, 862-3966. Um, well, we got the money here. Uh, Ray bought, brought some pictures, uh, fairly interesting pictures. Is this a good time to do this? It's too late. She's already on it. Uh, maybe you want to explain that, Ray, what we're, what we're looking at here. And, and well, this is a store downtown in Essex, and uh, I don't need my son-in-law to answer this one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is a building downtown as it was then, and uh, you'll notice the street is not paved, and you'll notice a lot of fine machinery there. And you also, I'd like to know if anybody knows the reflection of that burn in that window. Can you get that on the camera, or can't you? There's a barn in the, on the window on your left, in that left big window, there's a barn. And what was that barn and where is it today? Now that building is existing, but it doesn't look the same. Where is it? What is it? And what is it today? And what is that barn? That's the question. Ray, why don't you give them a little uh, something on it because of what street it's on now. <laughs> Well, He's being lenient here. Ray doesn't want to be lenient. No, they're they going to stump me. I want to <laughs> stump him. <laughs> <laughs> I found in our in our conversations the other night that uh, in, in both of them are involved here. Ray owns a building that that I grew up, sort of grew up with, and here comes, here comes. Well, we'll get back to it in a minute. And Ted had something to do with it back in the twenties or thirties. The when we talk about the Brown Building. The, the, Oh, yes, okay. right. Well, yeah. we, we'll take this phone call and we'll uh, get back to it. Around 1920, a little bit okay. before. Yes, you're on the air. Um, I was going to say that maybe Tip Top's down there, the, the pitcher. Speak up um, a little bit. Uh, is that Tip Top's and down by Henry's Market, that building? Tip Top? Yeah. No, Tip Top is on railroad. Right, that's not the building. No. Okay, you stumped me. Thanks for calling. Get them there. And I've seen the other pictures and I still don't know where it is. You got to figure it out. Mine too. There we go. Yes. Hi, Al. How are you doing? Good. The question about the building, it's on Main Street in Essex. It's across from uh, Henry's Market, right next to what is now Showtime. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I missed what the question was. You're close, but that's not the exact building. It's not the exact building. No, you're close. Oh, well, okay. You're getting warm. And you're handing them a... Thanks for calling. You're handing them at least a hint now. There we go. Yes. Uh, you get an answer? Yes. Oh, there you go. Okay. You're on the air. Sorry about that. Hello? Yes. Yeah, that building is the one up for where, where Showtime is. It used to be Huntley's Hardware. There you go. Before Ray Reynolds took it over and redid it. <laughs> you know him, do you? Yeah. <laughs> That I do. Who are we, who we speaking to? Matt Stevens. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> is that a fair one? Is that, is that well, one? His, his, his father ran an appliance store in the next building where we just spoke of, of the uh, old fire station. It was the fire station. That's, that's right. right. Your dad run that. Yes. You got it, Matt. Okay. Kind of, <laughs> thanks for calling. All righty. Bye. That Matt, was kind of an Matt inside. Get you want to give him a hat? Why not? Sure. I don't want to throw any of your bottles here. And a white hat. Yeah. Uh, why not? He deserves it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Getting back to what we were talking about. There's a building, in, again, it was a fire machinery place. Ray now owns it. And Ray, why don't you go into uh, what was in there when we talked about uh, the fire machinery place and then have Ted pick up where, where he... It meant something to you in your, okay. your younger years. What part do you want me to begin from C. the beginning? Brown, when, when At the time of C.E. Brown, and when he bought it, and what, what's the story? When it was built, or what? Give the C.E. Brown building story, and then and, uh, when he got back to uh, mm. where, where yeah. Ted was involved. Did Crandall I, build that building? Uh, Crandall? Don, Don Crandall's father. I don't know. I don't I, think so. I, I think I'm not so. sure. I think so. Could be. Well, they're arguing there. We're talking about the, C. E. the old C.E. Brown building, which... In, in my childhood, was the international harvester uh, dealer, and he spent a lot of time there. And But prior to that, they have a history of this, and, and, and again, part of it uh, Ted is uh, very familiar with, and uh, I guess reminiscent of, I guess. Oh, yes. 
Well, the building, uh, Mr. Brown rented it about 1939, I believe it was, and then around 1940, Mr. Brown bought the building and uh, run, conducted an uh, international harvester business there, uh, tractors, farm tractors, machinery, and so forth. And until the year that I bought it, and I bought the building from uh, Mr. Brown and, uh, well, from Charlie, his brother, uh, in 1960, 1980, 83, I believe it was. And uh, during that period of years, there was uh, a couple things in which Teddy wants to pick up what was in that building. I think you got a question there, Ted. What okay, why don't, why don't we hold off? We got, a, we got somebody on the phone? Okay. Hold on, Ted. We're going to get okay. it in there. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yes, you're on the air. Yeah, you know where the Snoko station is at, on the railroad tracks? Right there on Main Street. Bill Bushies. Okay. Across the street, Ed Von Sidus had a, a drugstore there for a while. Yeah. Going back 10, 15, 20 years maybe. That's right. Was, before that, it was the post office. Yeah. Okay. When the post office left, what, what did they leave inside the building? I mean, they left something that uh, was rather unusual? Yes, it was. Did I they leave three employees in there for four years? No. no that's not I the can answer. tell you a story on that one. Okay. Ted's <laughs> <What did they laughs> got a story on it. Well, now, was the assessor. I went up there on the top floor, and a pig ran out of the other room. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Jay, where did he come from? Well, like, he's our pet. So I told the owner that he was there just in case he didn't tackle him, you know. That was kind of funny. Was was that your answer, a pig? No, no. <laughs> I got it. What's the answer? Sure. They left the safe. I wondered about that. Because they couldn't take it out. They, they would have to rip the wall down to take it out, so they just left it there. One of those uh, steel huh. stand-up safes. Do you know where that safe is now? Somebody eventually uh, took it out of there, I bet. I don't think so. It was just a little bit too big. You'd have to remove the whole brick wall. <laughs> it might still be there. <laughs> Hmm. You, you know, that's a factual... I don't know. As I, far as that safe still being there? I the building's still, I guess this building's still there, then. Yeah, right. There was a grocery store there. Maybe. They're back. Yeah, but I didn't know, yeah, but I didn't know what you knew about leave, they, left, they had to leave the safe there before no. it became a pharmacy. Vaguely, I heard something about yeah. that one time. I, I, Did you know about the pig? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe a night and I asked Teddy about the sweater. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get on that. It was one time that he had showed me that at one time, about 20 25 years ago. So we still still think that safe's there. Yeah, but uh, of course the other part was that that they had left it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks for calling. So we'll, Bye. 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 What sweater? Don't get on that. No, you don't want to get on it. He's trying to get him in trouble here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you're going to finish the story about before C.E. Brown oh, see. On the, in that uh, particular well, building. What was there before C.E. Brown? I think you ought to go right into it. I'd well, that was a theater. And the uh, movie, uh, movies was yeah, a lot of Wild West shows and all that. And then they put on plays. A fellow by the name of Green Burnell came to town with a sideshow, I might say. And uh, he used then he married a girl from Essex. And he coached these shows that was put on by different groups, Methodist, this church, but with two or three on, and, and he called them the minstrels, another show with his local people, and had a lot of fun. I was in a couple of them. And, Were uh, you uh, big time stuff here? Or no, 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 uh, that's places? why I'm here, see. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun, though. What was the name of the theater? Uh, when, it, when it was out there. The fellow yeah. from Winooski owned it. Uh, I got it. Vilmere. Has to be a Vilmere. No, no, no. no. It was uh, La Valley. La that, Valley that, that was the other guess I was going to have. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's also got a C.E. Brown pencil here. An unused, of course. He's got a pocket full of stuff here. Um, and again, that was from the, the, the farm all, uh, the Cork Daring, Daring Farm Machineries and Implements. I'll tell you how old it is. The telephone number was 335. Okay, line one. Yes, you're on the air. Yeah, Al. Yeah. Tell me where the first jail was in Essex Junction. Oh, that why would I know about a jail? What do you ask me? That's easy. Hold <laughs> back, Raymond. Yeah, I know where it is. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's the corner of Maple Street where you turn in to go to 
Parkstown, that little yellow green yeah. building, whatever it is, a little else there. Oh, that's correct. Uh, yeah, yeah of course that's it. Before you bring my hat, you want to sign it? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> you turkey. Okay. Two Chabonau two lived upstairs. He was the jailer. The jailer lived upstairs? Yeah. <laughs> Davey, <laughs> the guy. You got to give him a hat here? Yeah, we'll give him yeah, a hat. I have one already. Oh, yeah? That's Dave. Mm, okay. Dave. How many, how many cells was in that jail? Two. You know that for a fact? You well, just thought about mine. I was never in there. <laughs> <laughs> I hear on the air. Yeah, I have a question about East Town Creamery. Yes. It originally was? Mm hmm. Wasn't it right there by uh, where uh, Hugh Hagedorn used to have a technical station? Hugh Hagedorn. Hugh Hagedorn. Where was Hugh Hagedorn? Yeah, he was across the tracks where Bushy is. Huh? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> you blew it then. <laughs> Yeah, where, where uh, Bushy is right now, right by that river. Right. Yeah, that's where Bushy is today. Yeah. Wasn't Ethan Allen Creamery right there originally? Uh, Ethan Allen Creamery was there and behind another building, and the question is, what was the building in the front of Ethan Allen Creamery? There was a, it was a business there, Matt Stevens stay off the air. <laughs> uh, I thought you wanted to know the question. Where the there was a, there was well, a, is that where the Creamery was? Creamery, yes, that's correct, but behind Bill Bushy's. But where, in the front where Bill Bushy Station is, there was a, um, there was a store. What was the name of the store? This is for a hat now, or a bottle of Benalga or an Essex Municipal The store was in the front, and this, uh, Ethan Allen Creamery was in behind. I don't recall the store. And, and, uh, I thought there was a store there. Oh, yes. But I don't recall the store name. I thought you wanted to know where the Creamery was itself. That, well, you know, that was correct. That's, that's one of the questions I asked, and thank you. That was it. Right. Thank you. Thank you. You guys gonna fight? I got a question for him. Yes. Uh, first A and P in Essex Junction. Where was it? I almost remember that. Should I also who, almost remember who, that? Who was the in the old railroad station? There was a, um, a station agent. A lot of station agent, but there was a restaurant in there. It was run by a certain large man. Who was he? And his son today is a uh, looks like his dad, and he's. Uh, a lot of publicity my about him in the paper. <laughs> Who was he? He's whispering in my phone down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're on the air. Uh, that store in front of Ethan Allen Creamery, that was Sylvester's Market. That's correct. Very good. You but who, who was one of the employees that worked there, you know? Yeah, you know, Marvin Campbell. Who else? Henry LaVoy. It turned into Henry LaVoy's store afterwards. All right, you got it. You know, well, Henry, the fuck do you? Ah, oh, he got it. Fletcher was there before. Huh? Fletcher was there before. Yeah. Yeah. You go back too far, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a question for us? I uh, say us. Yeah. Who is this? There you go. Al uh -huh. Stevens. Oh, John Baxendale. Oh, John. <laughs> I'll be darned. Okay, John. Thanks for calling. All right. Thanks. Yes, you're on the air. I have an answer to one of your questions mm -hmm. about the A&P store. Yes. Before it, where it is now, is the over um, where the teen center next to the Lincoln Inn, and before that, it was over across from the old railroad station. Hey, pretty good. Yeah. Who was the uh, man that run that store? Do you remember that? Who was the man that owned it and run it for A&P? Or he? Probably have to ask my dad on that. He used to uh, sort bottles there. They used to have returnable bottles back then. Uh, it's very good. That was uh, yes. where uh, the attorney's office is today. Yes, yeah, Dennis Hill's office, yeah. Yep. And now, uh, who was that man that run that store? That's the next question I'd like. Hmm. I couldn't answer that. I stole an apple there when I was a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still... <laughs> and you're still paying for it. <laughs> okay, thanks for calling. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> and you'll be over in that jail over by first now. <laughs> yes, you're on the air. Uh, did anybody answer that question about the uh, store that was in front of the East Down Creamery? Yes. Oh. Yes, they did, Ma. Oh. <laughs> do you know what it was? Ma, do you know what it was? Well, this I, is I the think birthday it was girl. Henry's. What was it again? Is it was it Henry's? No, before that. Oh well, I don't go back that far. No. <laughs> well, we've been answered in it was Sylvester's. <laughs> okay. Sylvester's Market. Happy birthday, Ma. <laughs> I like embarrassing her. That's what mothers are for. Oh, sure. Anyways, don't tell her I said that. 
Okay. Uh, Ted, you're being quiet again. Give yeah. us a couple more questions okay. out there. Where was the first piece of cement put down in the village of Essex? The first piece of cement? Yeah. Road. Short. Very short. Was it a slab to lay out one of the, the drunks out? In the <laughs> no. Ball? No, they didn't have many in those days. <laughs> I hear on the air. Yeah, one of the questions was, uh, what year did IBM come into town? Mm hmm Anybody know that? 1957. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the, one of the parts of those questions where there was a certain figure, the original group that was on the line, not the office people and all that stuff, but the, the, the grunts on the line, uh, how many were there that first week? Do you have any idea? There was about 13. 13 is correct. Now what's her name? I'll pull it out here. What's her <laughs> No way, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know their names. It was built by GBIC and... And then uh, it was empty for a while, then IBM came in, but I don't remember the name, but I remember it real well. Okay. Uh, have you, uh, you got another one? No, not right now. All right. I got one. Uh-oh, he's going to hit you with one. I, I want to know, I want to know um, who the man was, what his name was, that used to sell papers for the, Mer for the Berlin Free Press. He was a salesman for the Berlin Free Press, and he circulated around Essex and adjoining towns and he was a known man to sell the Berlin Free Press and the Free Press <laughs> in those days was about eight dollars per year and my father always wanted to know why it was free he couldn't see nothing free about it but who was the man that sold uh, uh, sold the subscription to that Berlin Free Press well I have no idea on that one how long ago was that what year was that well we're going to talk back into the 30s and 40s oh before my time <laughs> Well, there must be somebody out there. No, there comes the phone. Okay. They know. Okay. Thanks for calling. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Yes, you're on the air. Uh, yes, this is BFW again for Ray Reynolds. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I know who that is. <laughs> All right, Dave, go ahead. Not Dave Hammond. I know who it is. Yeah. Okay, what year... Was the last train that went from Essex to Johnson? Oh, you got me on that one. My father wrote it, but I, I can't. Uh, I should know, but I, I, I'm sorry, I can't put my finger on that. But that would be, that would be in the 30s. But I, I don't, I can't answer it. I'm sorry. Do you know the Stumped. operator of the locomotive? I should know that too. No, I can't remember. It's two stumps. You got to bail them out. No. You better throw two, three hats at him. <laughs> oh, uh, you, gosh, no, I don't. I think they're huddling over there. I got one for you while I was on there. Yeah. You own the house. Uh, what year was that? Uh, you own the house was one of the first. Uh, it was a fallout shelter, and you owned it. And uh, where was that house? Tell them. It was on Route 15, and I bought the house from uh, Letner. Yeah? Who put in the fallout shelter? Colonel Constant. No, who, who, who built, who was the contractor that built the fallout shelter? Built the fallout shelter? Yeah, at your house. Uh, Lester Scram. <laughs> no, he wasn't to entombed there. Is this a commercial, Ray? No, no. no? <laughs> I want to know who the contractor was. Built it. He, he's got a fallout shelter, and I, I want to know who built the fallout shelter. That's a simple you question. Think he's what does that climb in the Bay of Pigs? Oh, I know. Who? That's the Grizzle. No. No, you're wrong. Stumped again. Yeah. How much you, are we now, Ray? <laughs> <laughs> it's adding up fast. Yeah, I know it. Well, uh -huh. you got to tell me. You call in to stump me, you stump me twice. Now, I want to know who built that fallout shelter. I owned it. You owned the house. I didn't. <laughs> I'm not saying it was built for you. It was built before you for a guy with the name of Chudley. What was his last name? Chudley, what? You? He worked at IBM and he was, he wasn't scared for himself. He was scared for his wife and kids and he couldn't wait to have that building. He was an awful hurry, but he wasn't scared. Who was it? <laughs> Charlie Garrafe. Who, who the builder was? Charlie Garrafe. No. I want to know who the contractor was, put that in there. Who was it? You got me, Ray. I don't know. 
Go ahead, let him off the hook. You're looking at him. That's what I thought. <laughs> That's what I thought. I knew it. Ted was Ted had it right ten minutes ago. Yeah, he can't I, he can't get over and get this off for free. Gone commercials. <laughs> I like it. Okay. I'm ready to get the answer. <laughs> we get somebody on line one? Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for calling. Give him another give him another shot there before we're done here. Well, let's see. Who was uh Hold on a second. Wait a second. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, I was wondering if you could just give us all the information you know about the Jury Brickyard, how long it was in operation, um, all the different owners, and all that other good stuff. Can I take one of it? Jewelry. There, you're on your own. Yeah, right now. Well, I started way back. My, my grandfather worked there, and that goes right back, gee, I think it was the late 1800s when it started. And uh, my, my grandfather worked there, my father worked there, and it was owned by Drury all those years. It was Max and Harris was the head of it. And then it handed down to Had Ju uh, Boy, and then it was sold to Densmore, brick company on New Hampshire, and then uh, they fizzled out, and it, uh, I guess that was in it. But the pollution control was the cause of it, mainly the cause of it for being discontinued because the, uh, the burning of the kilns to dry the brick, cure the brick, they had to discontinue it. Right, do you know when they discontinued? Yeah, uh, that would be, um, not really, but I'm going to, oh boy. Light on, light on too. I, I don't know. I'm going to say in the, um, I'm going to say around 1962 uh, or 63, I'm going to guess it. And uh, the guy that built the, uh, I used to work with the man that built the, um, the round uh, kiln. And the, the bricklayer that built that round kiln was uh, Gilbert Pichy. And I worked with Gilbert an awful lot during the years, and about uh, the they, beehive. Uh, That's called it the beehive. Yeah, yeah. The beehive had it was round. It had the ovens all around it, and um, and that was. Um, well, I'm going to say in the early '60s that that was discontinued. So it ha it sat pretty idle for a while then, correct? I beg your pardon. The the whole um, all the buildings and whatnot sat idle for a while. Uh, uh, they sold their they sold their property. Yeah, a while. Yeah, Densmore owned it. Densmore Brick Company on New Hampshire. They they bought it from Drury, um, and uh, they then it it they closed it up, discontinued it. Okay, thank you. Thank You're you welcome. for calling. Um, hmm. Well, don't say anything when I haven't got any calls here. <laughs> Herb's not here to yell at you, no. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> answer, answered that. that uh, no, no. I, I, we only got a couple of sports questions here, but one of them that nobody seemed to have the answer to was, what year did Essex Junction start varsity football, and who was their coach? And you've got a semi-World War II sports question that you stumped me. Well, almost stumped me. I got it on the second thing, but why don't you... Uh, I want to know who, what year the, the varsity football program started. What was their coach? And then Ted's got the question on the World War II uh, uh, sports personality. Don't let me forget already. Oh, hey, I got a program him again, Ray. Jeez, uh, I'm the football. I don't oh, yeah. play. No, no, you're not going to answer that one. I want to no. know. Ask him the question on the uh, on the. Um, well, he wasn't the recruiter, but he was the uh, selective service. He's forgotten already. Oh, Ray Collins. <laughs> Yeah, that's the answer. <laughs> Tell them what Ray Collins was. For people that don't know, Ray Collins is, was uh, in the in the uh, Boston, uh, Red Sox. Boston Red Sox pitcher, along uh, at the same time as Babe Ruth and, uh, and Larry Gardner, and Larry Gardner uh, the, the famous Burlington personality that we've we've talked about before. But what was his job, uh, Ted, in in, in Essex uh, during the war? Well, uh, go back. He coached UVM for a while, and he helped Green Brunel coach the Essex high school team when I played. He was a tough nut, and, but nevertheless, you learned or got out one or the other. And uh, I learned a lot about baseball from him. I never could throw him where he told me to, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless, I tried. He was uh, quite a guy. And his job during the war was? Oh, he was on the uh, gas business, the ration of gas. And, uh, he, uh, I guess he didn't make too many friends on there, but. It's one of those jobs. He'll never be a popularity club. Was he also part of the selective service? Oh yes, yeah, he was on that. And what did he used to do out in the streets there? Uh, I'll tell you what he did. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead, Ray. Well, he, uh, Ray Collins, he was he walked with a cane, and uh, 1940 to 41, he was after every able-bodied 
young man for the for the selected service in the army, and he stayed in the window, which is now the part of the Lincoln Hall, uh, and he uh, he stayed in the window, and if a young man went down the sidewalk of the street, <coughs> he'd uh, hobble out with his cane and stop him, and asked who he was, what his name was, and where he was from, and then within short order, he most usually inducted him into the army. And that was what Ray Collins did. His farm is, uh, he lived in Colchester, and he lived uh, the next farm down Hill Farm, which is today Amy Ploof. But the next farm beyond that is the old Ray Collins farm. And he was uh, with the Boston Red Sox again, and Larry Garden and the whole group of them, they played together. Okay. Uh, we've got about five minutes to go here. I want to mention um, that next month, Herb, Herb and I will be on the film trail again into uh, into Burlington. We're going back into Burlington. We've also decided that we're going to do another Winooski show, I can't say when, and we will do a film version like we did in Burlington, uh, the beginnings of, of the old buildings in Essex also. Uh, these are future dates that we're not gonna hatch around. And you're gonna remind me what day we're gonna be next month? 15th. The 15th, on a Wednesday, same time, yeah. same bat channel, same yeah. everything. everything. She's got something else on her mind there too. Ed, there's a call for Ed. Ed and Paul Ted. Brad. Ted, I mean. Okay. <laughs> you ready for him? Oh, yeah. All right. It's Ted. Okay. You're on the air. I have a uh, question for Ted Baker. Yes. What year and who was the first coach of Little League in Essex Junction? What year did it start and who's the coach? Good one. Little League in Essex Junction. Woo. <laughs> now, you're a Little Leaguer, Ted. Yeah, right. <laughs> She's a lot of water gone over the dam since that <laughs> came up. Oh, it was probably, let's see, he's on his 40. Oh, yes, no, I know the answer. Oh, yeah, well, I, you probably know it better than I do. I'd have to make a guess, so. Uh, well, he's thinking in there. Do you, you, you have any idea on that football question, on who the coach was and what year that started? Yeah, on that. Huh? No, I have no idea on that one. Okay. Baseball man, huh? Yeah. 34. Okay. Not a Yankee fan, are you? Up by a darn sight. Huh? Up by a long shot. Good. Good. Sox fan. I'd hate to be a Yankee fan and a Giant fan in the same year. <laughs> <laughs> He's ciphering over here. You really got him stumped. He's a fine man. You're actually doing it, math over here, Jeff Rowe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, th I think it's about 58 years ago. Which was when? Well, it would be uh, <laughs> 1956. No, right? got to go back further than that. Oh, 56, 66, 66, 96. 40. Ooh. Okay, this whole thing? 1948, Ed. 1948. Who was the coach? Who was the first coach? Richard Nichols. I'll be done. Sure. He used to umpire when I was. I was his assistant. Who, who we got on the phone here? I'm here again, John Baxendale. Oh, John. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Thanks a lot. Uh, quick reminder. The. The Winooski School groundbreaking ceremonies that we're we're saying is coming on uh, on next. Yeah. I hear a yep way in the background, yeah. and that's going to be some. Uh, what do we got here? Burlington City Council. Yeah. Seven to eleven fifty. Yeah. Don't you do anything at a normal time here? No. Huh? Help you by reading sure. Them? Okay, I'll just read them. Do you quickly. hold it this way? But you do have. <laughs> there's another call for Ed. All your fans are coming out. Quickly, next, after this, a new Winooski School brown, groundbreaking ceremony and 7 to 11.50 to Burlington City Council, four and three quarter hours. It's okay. hard to read. I'm All right, old. here you go. I'll give one more call. Who are you, anyways? <laughs> Hello. Oh, Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Question for Ted, a Little League question. The year, the first year that girls played in the Essex Junction Little League. Hmm. Well, I mistook a girl for a boy <laughs> in that little league. You paid for that, I bet. Oh, yeah. I went to see her father, and I said, I want a, this uh, kid to play on my team. I said, where is he? he said, well, he says, that's a girl. <laughs> and who was that, Ted? I forgot now, but gosh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Take a guess. We're running out of time. Well, it's probably. It was in the 50s. Who was it? We're, we got about 30 seconds. I don't think it was in the 50s, Ted. 
but before that, right? No, I think it was later than that. I think it was the early 70s before Grow actually played in the Essex Junction Little League. Now, who is this speaking, please? This is Tammy Charbonneau. Was it oh, it was Tammy Shabano. Well, Ted, don't date me now. I'm not 87 years old here, sir. Yeah. It was okay. 1972, and it was myself and Martha Prakel were the first two girls to play in SSO okay. League. Okay. We're losing it. We're, we've lost it. That's okay, but you guys are great. Thanks for calling. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. You guys were great. Yes. Thank you very much, gentlemen.